Let's get started. We'll call this meeting to order at 7.02. Um, we have uh, Linda, myself, Paul, Joe, Jean, and KB. He disappeared. He disappeared on us, but we still have a quorum. So we've established a quorum. Um, I sent uh, the minutes from our last two meetings out to everyone. They had the uh, um, votes that we did on the warrant and then uh, the meeting before that. So do we have any, um, any corrections to the minutes, any comments? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. Make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. Okay, second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Just wanting to confirm, I could not log into the first half of the last meeting. Am I still able to vote for the minutes generally as? Yes, because your vote was on most of those minutes. Um, okay, so then, yeah. Okay. I okay. I abstained because I wasn't here. Yep. Okay. And we, st I've got KV on, but I can't hear him. I just heard him. There he is. Where? I can see his name, but I can't see him either. No. Popped on my screen, and I could hear him. Oh. Well, that's all right. We'll, we'll just, there's an, enough of us here. To Marshall noted that I was only here for the first half of the last meeting. Yes. Yes. Between us, we had it covered. That's right, between the two of <laughs> Yeah, you were certainly here to establish the forum. And then after you left, Paul was here to finish it out. So that was good. Um, we have, uh, I had invited the folks from the rec committee to come and talk to their warrant. Um, Thank you, Marshall. Have, pardon? Myself, oh. David Broll and David Dempsey are here from the rec committee. Okay, good. So, um, why don't you take it from here for a bit? Uh, we've got a warrant on an article on the warrant for $90,000. And, uh, so talk to us. Okay. Thank you. Actually, David, uh, Brawl and David Dempsey are going to present most of this. What we're asking for is $90,000 to, um, build, to construct a basketball court on Manter field on the Central Street Fields uh, adjacent to the field house. It'll be a six hoop court um, that we're hoping to generate revenue out of this uh, by running different terms and stuff, but I'm gonna leave the rest to them regarding the particulars on the court and the uh, potential revenue opportunities. David, if you, uh, Brol, if you wanna start with the construction piece of this, please. David, you're on mute. All right, how about now? All oh, right. good. Yeah, we got you. Sorry about that. Um, so we discussed this about a year ago, brought up to the last um, town meeting. Uh, essentially, we went in front of like professional uh, basketball companies mm -hmm. and um, sort of went through the process of finding what would be the best court and some of the ideas, sort of the, the basic thing was like a um, asphalt court, but um, the longevity of that didn't seem to be a great idea um, to spend money just putting down an asphalt, having it crack and looking like the uh, courts at Newbury Elementary. So um, we, it seems pricey, but the, the court that we have uh, sort of agreed on would be a great idea is a court that essentially um, has a concrete base and then they have plastic grids that go on top of that concrete base and then the basketball hoops and what it does is it gives 
And Dave Dempsey is a little bit uh, more of an expert about, you know, safety on uh, surfaces like that. But um, from my notes from before, we went through and we figured that um, the site has to be leveled and the area is uh, that the site would be, uh, it's sort of behind that field house area. There's a flat area and what we're trying to do is stay away from the septic line, but keep it so that um, it's sort of behind the field house and there's still ability for fire trucks and ambulances to go through and around the back. Mm -hmm. um, the site work, uh, which would consist of leveling, filling, um, because there's sort of a drop off there and put down concrete. Um, I figured probably around $50,000 um, if we had an outside person do it. Um, maybe the town could do it for less money, but um, the tiles are about $25,000. Um, and they, they basically, they locked it out of their grid. We can remove them. Um, we could, you know, there's multiple different types of uh, events we could do on it. Uh, hoops are right around $2,000 per hoop. Um, and what we'd like to do is we'd like to put six hoops in, uh, two main, so we have a full court that we could do tournaments on. And then um, there's sort of, if you've been to West Newbury, they have a similar type court. Um, they have uh, two, they have a total of six basketball hoops, uh, one on either end, and then uh, two in between so that you can run uh, smaller groups to play. Mm -hmm. So a total of six, six uh, basketball hoops. Um, and then we figured probably around $3,000 for fencing to keep the ball from uh, running down that hill and then people chasing the ball going into um, what sometimes could be, it all depends on the season. Uh, yeah. Summertime, we have the gates back there open so that people can go down there. Um, right now, the gates are closed so it wouldn't be as much but we're we're because of the area if you take a look at that area back there it, it sort of goes down and people would be chasing the ball into the um into the woods there so um i just did a you know real quick uh beverly rents out basketball courts at around 50 dollars an hour um to you know profit groups um meaning profit non non-town um, and we, if you take, you know, if, if we could get, I mean, we could make uh, about $20,000 a year if we rented uh, the hoops on a consistent, I mean, rented the, um, you know, got, uh, Dave Dempsey's probably better with us as far as getting, uh, explaining that. But I think that it's one of those things that if, if we build it, uh, such as the soccer fields, um, it's, it will bring in revenue. It's not a. It's not something we just do, and it is uh, useless for the town. It will bring in revenue, similar to what the soccer fields have. So, that's my spiel. Excuse okay. me. May I ask a question? Go ahead. What What do you mean when you say behind the field house? Do you mean uh, between the field house and the um, septic system? Yeah. If you take a look at a, um, I wish I could. I wish I could show you the picture, but yeah, there is an area we've, uh, we measured out directly behind the field house. If you, if you look behind the field house, between the field house and where the septic system, it's probably, yeah. I guess about 120, 150 feet before the septic system starts to go up. Yeah. And the, the piping is to the, um, as you're driving down there, the piping is off to the left. So we measure out everything so that there, if, one of our problems has been that area has been sort of an area people just park their cars on and they pull on the grass. They keep on mm -hmm. pulling further and further on the grass coming actually on that piping that goes out to the septic system. So this would basically eliminate that because it would block that area off. But we, we measured it out. There's enough room for uh, emergency vehicles to go still drive down there and turn around. Um, it, it's a, it's sort of a perfect place um, for the, for the basketball, I mean, for the basketball court to go. No, th thank you. I, when I think of behind, I was thinking in the driveway because that's behind the building. So it's just. Oh. No, there's, if you, it, the, the, 
like directly behind the building, uh, the, the footprint of the building. Um, if you follow that footprint of the building and then go back towards the septic system, there's enough room for a court and oh, yeah. um, for driving. Yep, thank you. Absolutely. I think Marshall, Marshall, if it actually makes it easier, um, after this meeting, I'll send you our proposal that we had last year, and it actually shows the layout of where the court would be put and also a breakdown of the costs that we were looking at as well. Okay. This will be the same presentation we're making at the town meeting on the 16th. Okay. Not the 16th. 16th is voting? 23rd. You're, you're correct. It's 23rd. Sure. If you make the presentation at the polls, I don't think you're going to get very far. Well, yeah, yeah. You never know. I can try and sell anything if I need to. Yeah. It's a good idea. All right. Uh, David Dempsey, do you want to quickly uh, give us a background on what we can do regarding to uh, the opportunities on this, please? Sure. Um, I'd just like to thank the committee for having us tonight. And I think um, when we talk, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about safety. My experience as a coach and athletic director, uh, you can't compare asphalt to a um, – to a, a court that is uh, has a synthetic surface, um, and so it, it really does make a difference. But I think, as far as the revenue goes, um, coaches are more willing and and will come out. As a coach, I would not bring a basketball team out to have them practice or run clinics or do camps on a um, asphalt court just because of the wear and tear on the athletes. Uh, these these courts are much more forgiving. Uh, they're a lot safer. They're, they're they're not going to crack, so the, the longevity is much better. And also, they can replace the small panels at any time. If certain parts of the court, like the foul line wears out or the center court wears out, uh, those are easier to replace. Uh, so that's it with the court. As far as, as far as tournaments, again, as I said, you know, coaches will come out to good courts. I know in Salem, uh, down by Harbor, down by Palmer Park and places like that, uh, they have summer leagues. They have summer tournaments. Their kids back from college. Uh, that like to play in summer leagues, they you know they, they they're willing to, to, to pay to to rent the court and uh, have tournaments. Uh, coaches love to come out in the summer and outside uh, gymnasiums. With the cost of um, custodians and the cost of buildings now are just so expensive uh, to be able to come out and rent the court, as David said, for fifty dollars an hour and not have to pay another hundred fifty bucks for a custodian or a building and security and all that. Uh, it just makes more sense. Um, the kids are outside. It's a much more better environment. And I think uh, when you put a good court in like this, you will get coaches, uh, not only from Triton, but from other areas that will come in and want to run a camp or a clinic. Uh, and they start with very young kids. You'll also get perhaps even a summer adult league that might want to come in and play on a night when, uh, when the court is more available than other nights. Uh, so I think that, it, you know, by putting, putting the money up front and really putting in a good quality court, is going to attract a lot, a lot more of a, of, of a higher level of, of athletes and, uh, and, and, and allow them to be able to come in. The other thing is when you put an attractive court together like that, you'll get kids from Newberry to come down, families to come down, dads will come down and shoot hoops with kids and things like that. Uh, when you put an asphalt court in and you get frost tees over several years and all of a sudden there's large cracks and the, the, the level starts to break up and it's difficult to dribble and do those things. That's a deterrent that will, you know, really, uh, you know, um, create a situation where people are not going to come to that court and play. And you're certainly not going to get um, the level of high school coaches or even some, you know, junior college coaches to run clinics or run camps for, uh, for the youth of Newberry and our surrounding communities. So I think it's advantageous to really look to a court of this quality level. And I think that if we're really serious about getting revenue, that's this is really the way to go. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, Shoot. First of all, tr well, Tracy's taken a, a little leap. But when we look at a couple of things, one, uh, we want to have yeah. the courts available for Newbury residents for sure. Uh, right. And so these would be open courts. They're not. Are they locked up or not locked up? What's no, the they're open. Nope. They're open courts, Marshall. Okay. I think it's gonna. I think the idea is basically like um, the way the field is set up right now, where uh, if we can get permitted hours, they'll always be open, unless someone has permitted, uh, you know, an hour for or let's say they do three hours on, you know, three hours from let's say 
six to eight or six to nine or whatever is feasible during the summer. Um, and then the other times it's open. It, I, that's, I think it's sort of, it will be run basically in the same sort of setup that the, uh, the soccer fields are run at right now. Hi, Tom. Yeah. Um, Marshall, the only thing is on where the other fields need time to rest, this wouldn't. And okay. we know that asking for this this time of year is, especially in the current situation, is difficult. But where we're trying to bring revenue back in, it is give us another opportunity. We actually looked at the NES courts to see if that was a possibility. But unfortunately, the fact that the buses drive over them every day uh, during the school year, it just doesn't work. Yep. Uh, well, that, that segues into exactly where I wanted to go next, um, which is to try to see what do we have available in their revolving fund, and is that available for this kind of project? Um, let me pull up the most current information. Hold on one second. In the meantime, Marshall, I have a question. Yeah. Is there any consideration of lighting the courts? Um, I think at this point, probably, um, probably not. I mean, I think in the future, maybe, but I think that opens up a can of worms um, where it sort of becomes a negative. Um, I think for us, it would, it, it would be a positive for us, but right. I think that, um, it, you know, the, the good thing is that it's so far behind everything that you're not going to have the noise problem that you would if it was out towards the street and starting to butt those neighbors. Um, so I think the location, it's pretty good as far as um, making people happy. Um, that, that's, that's what we sort of, that's what we sort of spotted it. That would be the best location. And would, what about, um, I'm thinking about hot summer days um, and kids, making use of that on a hot summer day is what's been your experience at other places? Well, I, I do know that the, the, the idea of the hot summer days to, to have a court of, with this substance of, of the surface, it's a lot cooler than black right. asphalt. Yeah. And it's not, it's not a, uh, a surface that, uh, re, that reflects the heat. It's more of an absorbent type surface. It's a much more comfortable surface to play on in the heat because right. it's concrete underneath and the concrete will draw the heat down and absorb it. It's not a reflective that will come back up as a black surface would. So on a lot of the asphalt courts that I've seen in Salem and Beverly and Danvers, uh, there's kids playing on them all the time when it's hot, when it's, you know, even early, early evening and things. Um, but I, I, I think it's a much safer and it's a much better surface to play on even when, they, when the temperatures can be higher than playing on a black asphalt court or, uh, um, or a lesser, a lesser um, absorbent surface. Thank you. What about, uh, what about revenue projections? Do you have any? Well, I, I just you know, briefly went down and, and wrote down um, if we could do three nights a week during the, just during uh, Monday through Friday at $50, that would probably bring us um, 750. Now this is all, this is, you know, being aggressive for the four, uh, let's say three, four months during the summer. Um, $600 for the weekend, you add that. Again, this is, this, is, this is on the high end. We could probably bring uh, 1350 a weekend for the court if we could get in outside groups renting, which I don't think will be a problem, um, you know, to have leagues in there. And then you do that over four, four weeks, I mean, four months, you know, you get about $20,000 for the four weeks during the summer. Four months. Four what, months what, during the summer. Four months. What's on the conservative end? Uh, well, <laughs> rather I, I, the conservative end. <laughs> I, think, I think the other thing too is when you talk about, when you're talking about rentals, I think, again, this, this, this court is also primarily going to be for the residents of Newberry. Right, I agree. So I think it really, realistically, you have to look at a blend on how you can allow this to be available at certain times for the residents, but also to be able to satisfy leagues and camps and clinics and things like that. So I think my, my suggestion would be in the first year, I would think that we would really kind of, you know, um, be conservative in, in, in the rentals to see how much use is used by the residents. And then also to see uh, if the local basketball coaches at Triton and some other local schools would be willing to put together 
community, you know, leagues from the kids from, from, from Newberry. So I think a, a lot of it is a balance of how you want to rent this because the, the last thing you want to do is build a beautiful court like this and have it rented all the time. And every time someone from Newberry goes down to shoot hoops with their son or a family wants to go down and shoot baskets or play a game of hoss or even if we set it up so that there was time for pickleball or racquetball or other things like that, you really do want to allow it so that there's a perfect balance for the community, but also rental. And I think that's the key to having it so that everybody's happy with it. Yeah. By going with six courts, um, you know, like a large, um, it, again, we, we sort of went around and, and there's a, a really, really, really nice court in Salem. Um, that has a setup around it so that it can be used as a basketball court during the summer and during the winter months it actually has a wall that's built around it and they pour water in there so that kids can skate during the uh, i mean that would be that would be you know sort of the cadillac but um i i didn't want to go there even though i that's that's right so I, looking at um the west newberry court which is really also sort of just a basic, not a basic court because they have a nice surface on top. They don't have this type of grid, but that's um, six courts, a main court. And then uh, you could split it in half and run two smaller games on half court. Um, so basically what we're proposing is a full, basically a college slash NBA size basketball court and then that is broken down into two two or half court. You can do full half court games in between. So it's usually utilizing the space that we have out there on the field and and maximizing it for the amount of people we get onto it. I don't know. I, I, it's bad because now I'm starting to sound like a salesman. You know, thank you. We can bring this, but I think that looking at this. It's something that is um, something that can bring in revenue. It's not something that, um, you know, it would really, really be nice to have a little playground out there, but we can't charge for playgrounds. Um, but if we, if we do a basketball court, um, it's sort of in the line that the, the town can use it. And then we can, it can be a revenue, um, a revenue generating uh, field. Thank you. Tracy, how you uh, a figure for us? It hasn't changed. It's one hundred and ten thousand six hundred forty-two dollars and thirty cents. But you also have to subtract the fifty thousand that we're um, going to appropriate at the town meeting for their operating budget. Okay. So would that sixty thousand uh, dollars be available for this project? Yes. Okay. So we, I, I didn't follow all that, Marshall. Okay. What was what was the, que what was the, the question, question were, that Tracy was answering? The question that Tracy was answering is there is a recreational fund revolving account okay. where all, all right. the money goes in. I, I thought that was okay. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so so there is sixty thousand available in that account. Uh, the reason I ask this is you'll be asking for money to complete this. And this is, as you know, this is going to be potentially a very tight budget year. Yep. And so um, the idea of spending more money is we'd have to look at at least getting it to cost neutral in a reasonable amount of time uh, mm -hmm. in order to support this thing for the town. So everybody thinks, everybody thinks the, or most people that I've talked to have said, you know, it's a great idea, a great place to put it. Um, but we're also looking at, this is going to be a tough budget year. So I, I think that you know, what we're doing as far as coming up with that cost is, we also looked at it um, that we, after we went and we went through the town the last time around, we had someone that came up like a private citizen that said that they would donate a lot of money towards it. Um, and then we had one of the basketball groups that would donate. So there's, our, our thought was, okay, we'll ask for this amount of money and then we will, 
try not to spend that amount of money and really cut it back by what we um, have had for people saying they would donate. We, you know, like it's not like it's it's in stone, but um, some of the citizens have asked that they would donate towards the court. Um, and we had um, I don't know. Mike Mike has a better idea on what. Was. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, Marshall, I've also met with Tracy uh, to talk about, and Lisa Mead, our town attorney, to talk about possible sponsorships. So the original amount we're asking for is sort of a, a starting point for us in regards to that's, we're, that's the most we're going to ask for. But with the donation and the, the two do, the potential donations we've received, we've got almost another twenty thousand dollars we've already received that have been possibly gifted to us. So if we can get those with this confirmation. That ninety thousand may be down to seventy seventy five thousand, and then whatever work we can do regarding two sponsorships, we hope to reduce that money even lower. So this is one of those we're not taking ninety thousand. We don't want to take ninety thousand dollars and say, "Great, that's it." We want to work and earn the rest of this. If anything, we want to make sure we can. If we can do it, we want to um, find ways to pay for it ourselves. So through the committee through our work. Well, I, I think that the. The sixty thousand dollars that we have in your revolving account is earmarked for the recreation committee. And it's money that you have put in there that we we take out as you need it. And the, so the sixty thousand, are you looking at the sixty thousand as being part of that ninety thousand? No, I did not even consider that, Marshall. If you're telling me we have sixty thousand dollars in the revolving account that we can use. So if I take my 90 down to 60, take the 60 off of it, leaving me 30, I may have an additional 20 already. So we could be in very good shape without even have to really start working at that point. I just want to make sure I'm clear on that statement. Is that clear, Tracy? Is that, uh, in, in fact? It is, it is definitely available and it's available to the committee, um, but that, that would be exhausting all of the money that has we could also I don't know how how the finance committee feels about utilizing some of our reserves whether we make an appropriation from free cash or um, consider something from the stabilization fund um, or you could do a combination of all of the above I'm, I'm the only thing that I'm concerned about is this each season's uh, field rental fees you know, generate, I, I'm not sure what the total amount of the revenue is, and obviously this year we'll probably be a little bit low. So I, I'd be a little hesitant of exhausting the full 60,000, um, but certainly you could use a good portion of it. Mm -hmm. I think um, when, we, when we look at it, uh, David, when going to town meeting for this, um, explaining your eventual uh, coming out revenue neutral or certainly tax neutral for the town for this benefit would be what I would stress would be uh, a very important part of your presentation. The fact that you've generated uh, more funds than you've used so far so that you have a balance in that account talks to that, but then we're going into some very uh, questionable times as to, for, as to how well you're gonna be able to keep that up. Um, but I wanted to talk to you and say, you know, that's gonna be a very important part of going forward. Uh, now you do know that there is more money in that account. Uh, what you wanna keep as a, a buffer in that account uh, is, is something that you guys are gonna to have to Talk about. I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I certainly would look to the, the finance committee for any recommendations you may have regarding to um, what would be the best way to go about it in regards to breaking up that money between the stabilization fund or other opportunities if we did a portion of each and then left pieces behind. Um, my concern, I've been a part of the basketball program for years here and um, seeing the youth programs, and a lot of the kids just end up going away to other schools. I'd like to find a way in working both with 
um, the athletic department at Triton and the, the elementary school in, in Newbury to see if there's ways that we can develop a program here to help um, rebuild that program for both the girls and the boys. And we think this is probably the best way because right now the only other court that's available is NES and unfortunately it's in disarray with a lot of the um, uh, frosties and the uh, mm -hmm. damage from the uh, school buses going over. So. Uh, if they want to go anywhere, they're going to Newburyport, they're going to Salisbury, they're going outside the area just to get the basketball court. Understood. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pieces in this consideration, and we do understand this is probably not the best time to do it, um, considering the, the economic times. But we also realize the importance behind it and something that we can do to help the community, not just the younger generation, but um, everybody involved. Well, as I say, that, that uh, $60,000, which is in that fund, is in the fund for the Recreation Committee. Uh, you guys have, have put it there. And so uh, utilizing that and refurbishing that and, and refunding something that could go back to the town so that it's more temporary funding than permanent funding and to have an asset for the town uh, sounds like it would be a, um, a reasonable move going forward and a reasonable presentation for the town meeting. The problem I'm going to run into, uh, Marshall, is if I get 60 from the, from the rec committee, I'm still short the other 30. How would you recommend us asking for that? Or is there a way either do stabilization or any other means at this point? That would have to come from whatever, what, what account would be best for that, Tracy? Um, stabilization stabilization request, now has got what sixty two thousand in it. Uh, stabilization right now has. Let's, oh, that's reserve fund. Has four hundred and forty seven thousand in it, and right now free cash. Um, let's see, cash. We've got one point four million, so we we have some money. Mm -hmm. and Marshall. Yeah, Tom. Tom, go ahead. One selling point that I look at is the fact that when I listen to Mike talk about this, the fact that they're asking for some money, but if they didn't use all that money, if they, the money came back to the town or didn't go out in the first place, I think is a selling point. Um, sometimes you end up having money put out there, but they keep the money, you know what I mean? So. If there's fifty thousand appropriated and they only needed twenty, they still had thirty thousand. But the way Mike's explained this, the way I'm taking it is the fact that they may not take all that money. If that be the case, I think it's a selling point that while they're asking for it, they may get donations, which will bring it down to thirty, which is a much more selling point than fifty. So, so Tom, I would I would just say that. The town should go under the understanding that it's there's no guarantee of that though. That's no. that's our risk, right? It, and, it, and the mm -hmm. town's going to bear that risk. So I think we just have to be aware of that. So it would be a much better sell if you had those donations in hand, and then we we have a guaranteed twenty or whatever that case may be. So I, I, it's just a factor of risk control and where that risk is going to be appropriate. Is it us or is it you? And how how do we want to balance that? So. No, I, I agree that it's not a guarantee that this, they're not going to use the money. It's just the fact that there's a potential that they may not need that much money. I mean, this was somebody after the vote got declined last year or denied last year that walked up to one of our members and said, I'd like to give $10,000. We're looking at this as we need the 90 to get the, the project started, to send it to bid and get it going. We're then going to be charged with we want that. We want to. We want to get this paid for via donations, sponsorships, whatever, because we want. We're invested in this. I mean, we've all been on this committee for years, and we're still plugging along and trying to get it done. So this isn't one of those things. So we just want to make sure we have the money to start, and then work. Let us do the job to get it taken care of on the backside. So well, Mike, I also, I also think as far as as far as the neutralized funding is. Um, that, you know, over time, when we look at it over a long period of time, is that it, the more that w as a committee we're capable of finding revenue, either through rental of fields and rental of courts and, and other programs and other activities, um, that also allows the town, takes a lot of the burden of financing the recreational committee 
uh, and allows us to become a self-sufficient committee through our revenue. So over time, uh, even though these investments up front might sound as though that they're a lot, over time, the more areas of which we can create revenue for the town of Newberry, the less and less we're going to look to the town to help support the, the recreational committee and the recreational activities within the town itself. And Michael, if you could uh, firm up that commitment at least uh, at some level before town meeting, that would probably go a long way to helping. Do you mean the 20,000, Marshall? Mm -hmm. Or right. any portion thereof. Any, okay. I'll re we'll reach out to the two different people and see if we can get that resolved before then. Marshall, can I ask, uh, have the selectmen voted on this already? They have. It was a 4-1 vote for. Say that again. Passing it. It was okay. a four to one vote approving okay. it. Right. I got that from Mr. Greco yesterday. I, I think um, I wouldn't want to go to the town meeting unless we have firmed up where the resources are coming from. Yeah, I agree with that. Whether they're coming from free cash, whether they're coming from stabilization, whether they're coming from recreation revolving, whether they're coming from wherever. So we need a recommendation, Tracy, maybe. Yes, that's kind of what I'm With respect to that, uh, that covers the 90. I mean, I don't mind saying, you know, and then then they can come in and let us know that it's going to be reduced. But we have to have a package to put together, not He's necessarily correct. wherever it's coming from. That's how I look at it. Chairman Justison. Yeah, go ahead, Tracy. Um, it, it's it's not unusual for us to go to town meeting with a proposal, whether it's construction or or something like we're we're talking about this evening, and request the full amount, and then subsequently be notified of um, a successful grant application, and then we reduce the amount of the you know. Mm -hmm. the, created expenditure and then that closes back out to free cash. So we, at this point in time, we, the article um, would propose uh, using $90,000 from free cash to fund this project. If at some point before town meeting you receive the commitment, then we could certainly amend the motion and reduce it to 70,000 or whatever um, amount the committee felt comfortable with at that point um, but it's it's entirely up to you are we what? locked into the free cash at this point that's what the article was approved at yes we the finance committee and selectmen met last week and approved the articles oh, did the finance committee approve that yes yep. oh, oh all right. um, but okay. we can you were taking care of a plumbing issue i know <laughs> I know that. You can certainly amend the motion. The, the motions can be Right. That was my next question. Yeah. If the... No. If... Go ahead, Paul. Because, Tracy, you said that the 90000 would be the full amount and then would be reduced by the later 20000 I understood it that the 90000 would get the ball rolling and then we would need the extra donations to complete the project. Is that correct? No. 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 Okay. 90 is, is what we're looking to get done. That should take care of everything. We're planning on between the donations and trying to reduce that number and then via either we took some money from the rec committee if we needed to at that point. But I plan on working with the committee and trying to see if we can raise as much as we can to get that back. Bring back money to the town. Okay. And that uh, if, if this were done from free cash, that would leave the balance in the revolving account in the rec committee. Right. Okay. And that could be available later on if if we decided that's how yeah, we you, want to go. You don't want to use up all your resources. No, no, no. I was, I mean, I was prepared to look at maybe a third um, yeah. or half, so 20, 30,000 if we needed to there. And I'm, I'm right. kind of keeping that in case the bids come in and they're a little higher and we have to use from it, then we have that as, a, as our backup. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm no, good. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, very none. Thank you very much for your your time and uh, your efforts on behalf of the town. I really we really do appreciate it. Well, thank you for having us tonight. Thank.
Thank you all very much. We really appreciate you taking the time. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. All right. Um, Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. We had some uh, moving on. I did, uh, as I mentioned, invite uh, Jim Morant to come and talk to us about the issues or the articles that he had introduced into the warrant. Uh, he declined, did send the justifications for those articles, which I have sent out to you. Um, at this point, I don't think there's any discussion that we have to make, nor do I, uh, unless somebody has a strong feeling otherwise, I don't think we have to amend the votes that we took um, last week in our joint meeting with the selectmen. I, I just have a, a quick question. Sure. Question. <laughs> My tongue got tied. Tracy, mm -hmm. if, if in this proposal of theirs, they want to take, you know, half a million dollars and put it back in like free cash. Or If we take that out of where it's sitting now mm -hmm. and put it back into free cash, it could get used. So then say a year from now, whatever that money was appropriated for and sitting like say the town hall repairs, mm -hmm. to, where are we going to get that? We're going to have to go back to a town meeting and beg for it. Yes. Did it make more sense for it to stay where it is? I, I Infinitely don't, more sense. Yes. I, I, I guess I'm just looking at it from a very conservative person. And when you get money, you leave it in the savings account. So when you need it, you can take it and use it if you have a specific purpose for it. That, I, that, I just want it to be clear so that yeah. I can yell at people. I think Selectman Jesperson's... Um, idea for creating this account was so that we didn't have to go back to seek another override. Yeah. Rather, we, it would take us longer, certainly, because we'd have to put money into the account each year. Um, and then we'd have enough money available to move forward with the renovation or addition of town hall, um, yeah. whatever the proposal might look like. So I, I, I think what we've done previously is common sense. I think this is not common sense to me. But anyway. I, I would say that I would preference the sense part with none. <laughs> <laughs> go with that. So um, that being said, uh, unless we have some other comments, go. Marshall, may I uh, speak? Yeah, go ahead, Steve. First, let me remind the FinCon that I did not sign any of the four articles that the citizens brought forth. <laughs> So I was pleasantly surprised to see that uh, an article was being brought forth by the citizens about selling the property that would otherwise be converted to a bathroom. And I was hoping that Jim would be here and I would add to whatever he had to say. And I'm still prepared to quickly go down a list about why I think it's a good idea with a hope that the FinCom would consider or reconsider its vote or the votes that were taken regarding that particular article. And I don't remember what the final tally was, except okay. the extension by Gene. The vote on that article actually uh, was the will of the town. And so the FinCom did not make a comment on that article. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that the FinCom may decide to support the article in part because number one, it does involve money issues so that the FinCom may have what I'll call standing to talk about it. But it ultimately seems to me that given upcoming capital expenses, and you may be able to opine about that, Marshall, but what you see coming down the road, whether it be the fire station or the town hall, but seeing that there are upcoming capital expenses, this may not be the time to commit more money for the bathroom. I understand that the town already voted to buy the property but I would suggest that that vote was taken in good faith. But then it came to light six months later that we needed to spend more money for the uh, police station building, which the town supported. That was a million dollars. And though one can never prove it one way or the other, I suspect that one of the reasons the town was not in favor of spending another $200,000 for the bathroom reconstruction is that we had, you know, we're beginning to obligate money upon money upon money and we needed to stop 
spending, given what we knew what was coming. But the final thing I'll note is that I haven't seen any proposals being set forth by the town about what the O&M operation and maintenance of such a structure would be all about. And I suspect mm -hmm. that's gonna represent a significant financial obligation for the town in the future. And if we overextend ourselves, I suspect that's gonna put in jeopardy plans for a fire station and town hall renovation. So I'm thinking if the FinCom is able to step back and take a big look, um, a big picture look, particularly with in, uh, input from capital planning, you might say this is not the time to support the continued renovation and maybe it is time to support the citizens petition to sell the property. Well, there, um, thank you, Steve. There are two, two issues that come up. One is going forward with uh, doing the bathroom and the second one is selling the property. And while I, I certainly am looking and we all are looking really hard at ex expenditures in the next short period of time until we figure out what's going on, uh, certainly with the economy, um, and a postponement might be in order. The idea of selling the property, however, would be, this is just about the worst time I could see to say, oh, let's take some of our property and sell it because I think the market is really uh, pretty far down for that. And so um, while you certainly can argue that uh, any plans going forward in the future, because that plan was uh, voted down by a narrow margin at the town meeting, uh, go through capital planning and then come back. Um, and if it is, if the citizens decide that in fact, that if that is the cost issue, then, uh, then you would probably have a case, but I think it's not one that I would move on now as far as voting to sell the property. And so, um, unless somebody else has a, a different slant on that, I think we would still leave that to the will of the town. I agree with that. Gene? I, I think so, except I also, didn't we get, uh, it's been a while, didn't we get some operating costs at some point, Tracy? And I, at the time we had some questions and I still have questions, but um, I think some of those were addressed, but I can't remember what the answer was. <laughs> it was a while ago. So if you can help me out here. <laughs> um, since the date that we purchased the building, we've hired, um, you know, we hired an architect to do the design um, for the renovation. Uh, that was how we got the initial cost estimates, and it came in right around 200000 to be prepared to go out to bid. Um, since that time, we have had a member of our DPW, oh, and we also received grant funding from Senator Tarr and Rep. What was that, 40, 60? 40,000. 40, 40, and so um, we've also a member of our DPW has gotten his unrestricted contractors license, which will allow us to do the work in house of, instead of going out to bid. We'll still have to build bid um, the electrical and plumbing um, to get a licensed person to do that work, but we can do the the other work inside with our town workforce. So that will, you know, certainly bring the cost down. But we. You know, we are into this right now for um, quite a bit of money uh, and to turn around and sell it in a down market really doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense, but financial sense, I should say. Um, as far as maintenance costs, annual maintenance costs, the projections that the DPW director had provided were about 17000 a year, a little bit under 17000 a year um, to rent it for the entire season, so. So what, what would it cost for the, for the rental of porta parties that, that we've had for years that are disgusting? We just got a quote to rent for this season. Granted, it is with additional cleanings relative to, to the, um, man, the beach management required 
uh, cleanings for because of COVID, but it's over five thousand dollars for the season. Yeah, for the rental. Yep. Um, okay. What the bodies? Yeah. Now, one of the questions that does come up often, and I didn't think the chief answered it, was the crossing of that street. He actually sent you a letter. I um, know, but it didn't. Yep. Is there? I mean, I know the traffic is the traffic is the traffic, but how many, is there some estimate of how many times we're going to have people crossing that street? And is there an attendant still at the, at the parking lot that we had at one time or? There, there is, Gene, um, as of last week when the parking lots reopened, there was someone there, but I can tell you being an island resident that the traffic on the island in just, you know, whatever this short amount of time is that things have somewhat loosened up has been 5X what it was last year and we're not even into the summer months. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm just concerned Do we need to, will that be an expense? And I, it's related to operating. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, I'm not saying it should st necessarily stop the project, but I just want to get a picture of the whole cost. And if we have funding for the uh, parking, I, I can't remember the whole title, enforcement official. We, we still have the funding for that position. And would that, could that include crossing people? If we need to. Why not? Yeah. Because how many, how many, um, what do you call them, porta potties do we normally have there? I think we have six usually. Okay. And how many stations will there be in the in this new bathroom? I, I'd have to go count on the plan. Oh. I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. <laughs> Multi-use, whatever. Um, yeah. But uh, all right, I, I just, that's a concern. It was raised years ago by other members of the finance committee who aren't here, uh, was the, sa safe, the safety and the crossing of the street. Absolutely. I know you have to slow down to go around the corner, yeah. but um, <laughs> is there even a crosswalk there somewhere? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Steve, weren't you the attendant there? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I was, the, I was the code enforcement officer. Oh, code enforcement officer. And okay. If I may, right. I'm trying to you know, step carefully in what, what I say based upon that experience, but I can uh, still conjure up the sound of the porta party doors opening and closing regularly, yeah. which to me means that in terms of traffic, people are going to be crossing the street virtually continuously, right. yeah, which yeah. then gets into an, an issue not probably under the purview of the FinCom, that is about what it's going to do to the traffic coming to a dead stop as people are trying to get home or leave the island. Yeah, totally mm -hmm. agree with that. Just something we have to think about going forward, I think, a real realistically. Um, well, Steve, you and, you and Joe have much more firsthand knowledge of that than the rest of us. So we kind of lean on you guys to... I do like right. the idea of getting rid of the porta potties. <laughs> I'm with Linda. Right. It's not our purview, but it's <laughs> again, you know, the focus has to be, I guess, of what the citizens' petition is all about. Oh, but you know, ancillary to it all is, I think Ron Barrett came up with something with a a portable toilet which you can wheel in and wheel out, and actually, is very nice. Uh, I've used one at a winery down in Rhode Island. Uh, but they had such a facility. They're quite nice. I think he said they cost about 30000 and you put it back, you know, it'll go away at the end of the season. But it's a yeah, very it's trailer. It's a big, big trailer. Yeah, yeah, essentially. And I, but again, I think it's around $30,000. But again, I'm, it's bringing that up. I'm going off topic from what the citizens yeah. warrant is all about. So, right. yeah. If you ask me, I'll yeah. say more, but I'll be quiet otherwise. Okay. Oh, I, th you. I think, um, Marshall, I, I remember seeing those high-end um, portable bathrooms used yep. at some of the, um, where was it, the Mercedes-Benz um, facility down in Somerville when they were doing renovation. Mm -hmm. yes. They had those in and they were 
very nice bathrooms. Yep, and I've seen them. They're up at the Agunquit Playhouse. Yes. So there are lots of places that, that use those because of the problems that they have. And, and so uh, while that's not one of the things that is an article on our present warrant, it, we all have experience seeing how some alternatives could work. Right. Okay. Steve, anything well, else? Well, simply that said, I would wish or hope that the FinCon could reconsider its vote on this article, whether it be abstain, yay or nay, but ultimately support the article as presented by the citizens. Um, I will, uh, I would entertain a motion to that if, if one of the members of FinCom wanted to look at changing the vote right now, we have left it to the will of the town and have taken no position on it, neither plus nor minus. There's nothing in front of us at this point, correct? That is correct. correct. So So not hearing a motion, I think we're going to let it stand as it is, Steve. Thank you. You're welcome. Always good to see you. So we have, uh, do we have, a, now we've, I've gotten and circulated our expenditure reports. The income report is, the only one we have was the one we had at our last meeting. So that has certainly not changed. We are running down to the end. We have 93% as of this report, 93% of the year is gone. 83% uh, of our expenditures have been used up. So it looks like we're pretty well in track. Tracy, is there anything you would like to add to these reports? Any explanations or how we're finishing up the, uh, the year here? Nothing, nothing has changed since we last spoke about them. They're pretty much where we would expect them to be. Um, I was concerned um, with the pandemic that we may have some, some deficits at year end, but we've, been, we've received a couple of grants from Mass Department of Public Health to fund our public health nurses. And we do expect um, to receive reimbursement funding both from uh, FEMA as well as from the CARES Act. So I think we're going to be just fine. Okay. The budget for, budget for next year looks like uh, a 1.6% increase. Mm -hmm. um, that, what does it, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very cautious about uh, our funding for next year. And so one, which is one of the reasons that I was certainly not a fan of moving money around on the articles that uh, Mr. Moran uh, gave to the town or got onto the uh, warrant. However, uh, that being said, um, are we, do we have enough in the reserve to look reasonably confident that we're going to make budget next year? Um, you know, I wish I had a crystal ball, but wish you could go. yeah, I, I will tell you that I typically am conservative in my revenue estimates. I don't push them out as, as far as they could possibly go because um, you never want to end up with a revenue deficit in any year. It's always, easier to you know add additional money at a subsequent town meeting than it is to go in and cut budgets mm -hmm. so i to to estimate um conservatively and at budget conservatively um there haven't been substantial increases to most of these budgets in the time that i've served the town um 
That being said, there is a lot of discussion going on right now on Beacon Hill and actually across the country relative to the CARES Act. One of the things that they won't allow you to use it for is revenue replacement. And that's really the only issue that I would be um, concerned about for fiscal year 2021. Um, although the projections are relatively conservative and are based in fact, um, if suddenly nobody bought cars and our motor vehicle excise projections dropped by a half a million dollars, right now the way the CARES Act money is structured, you can't use it to replace revenue. You can only use it for pandemic related expenses. Mm -hmm. Um, but there, again, there's a lot of pushback from the managers associations, the uh, government finance officers associations. I know I was just speaking with Representative Mira. We were having a conversation about it. So my sense is there may be some movement on that, and that would protect us. Um, once, if the decision is made that we can use it for revenue replacement, then I wouldn't be concerned about fiscal year 2021, but that's still... Um, that's still being debated right now. Okay. Is there uh, anything else before the committee tonight? I do have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> Just very quickly. Town meeting is scheduled for the 23rd. 23rd, correct. And that's a go? It is a go. Um, we have moved the location. So normally, okay. you know, we generally get two to 300 people at a town meeting. Um, we've moved it to the Triton Auditorium, which, could, which can seat in excess of 800 people um, to ensure that, you know, people can sit at the, the six feet apart. Um, they will be required to wear masks. We'll bring some extras in the event that someone forgets. We have received the sanitized response clickers and what we're going to do is um, put them into plastic baggies as well with alcohol wipes um, so that people will hopefully feel more comfortable using them. Um, there's a few other things I'm trying to think okay. of precautions we're taking, but um, hopefully people will feel comfortable coming. We um, removed all of the bylaw changes from the warrant. We figured best to conduct business as quickly as possible as well people are, um, in that area for an extended period of time um, no they the school we're meeting with Chris um, Walsh tomorrow to go over all the details and set everything up and get all the, the logistics in place we're gonna um, add additional microphones so you won't have to share them um, they what about spacing for, the, for us on the, uh, yep, this you'll have to the be selectman spaced. and the FinCom? Yep. yep, you'll have to be spaced appropriately. Um, and they do have the fogger, so they'll disinfect um, prior to us coming in. Um, Is there additional people for checking? Tracy, I choose where you get your backup. Are there additional people what? I'm sorry. Checking for, checking people in. It, for the checking oh. in? Yeah, they'll, they'll, we're going to try, that's why we're going in tomorrow to see where the, the entrances are to see so we don't get people lined up. So we have multiple areas where they can come in um, so we can avoid that or set up cones. We're going to do, we're doing all the logistics tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Could I suggest that while I, the, the people who run the little charities and whatever, uh, are normally there, that they not be there this time around? Sure. Okay. Anything else? Well, we have a couple of guests. Leslie, thank you for coming and joining us and being so patient. Uh, we've got uh, Jack Rybicki, who's been here. So, uh, Thank you all, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Your motion. Yeah. Second. No, I said thank you, Marshall, for the acknowledgement. I appreciate that. Oh, not a problem. Um, so, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you all very much. We'll end the meeting.